Hey guys, it's Jill. Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, welcome. So today I'm taking an idea from Kelly's Corner who decided to do a marathon of crockpot videos. So I was like, that's genius. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take a lot of my most popular crockpot videos and I'm going to mash them all together so you have one place to go for all of your favorite crockpot recipes. Or if you're new here, you can watch a lot of my most popular crockpots meal recipes right here and you don't have to go searching for them. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. It's going to be like a really long video. So pick and choose what you want. I will list down below each recipe and put a timestamp so you guys can easily access each recipe. And whichever one you see in the description box that you think sounds good, you can go ahead and just click the timestamp and it'll take you right to that recipe. So I hope that you guys enjoy this and let's go ahead and get started. So for this meal, this is our first crock pot dump and go crock pot meal. We are having a kind of like a twist on a tomato soup. So first what you want to do is go ahead and brown up some Italian sausage. I had it here in a strainer over here in the sink so I could drain the grease. So you want to go ahead and brown that up. One pound of Italian sausage, ground Italian sausage. Put that in there. Then you want a can of 28 ounce a 28 ounce can of petite diced tomatoes. Throw that in there. Then you want two cans of 10 and a quarter ounce cans of tomato soup. So just dump those in there. And then you want this full container of chicken broth, which I use the reduced sodium. So what I'm gonna do actually, so I can get all of this tomato soup out is go ahead and pour it into the cans and this is all you're going to need for now what you're going to do is cook it on low for six to eight hours and then 30 minutes prior to we're going to add some more stuff to this so I'll show you that when we get to it by the way this is the night before I prefer to make my crock pot meals the night before. Go ahead and just dump everything in, anything that I need to cut up or brown up or anything. So that way in the morning, all I have to do is literally put my crock pot out on the counter for it to come to room temperature and then I will put it in the base. So this is going in the fridge until tomorrow morning and I will see you guys 30 minutes before it's time to eat so I can show you what else we're going to put in here. Okay, so it has been cooking on low all day. Just got home. So now I'm going to add in one package of cheese tortellini. And you're also going to add some cream cheese. Now it's said to add in two containers of these. So 16 ounces of the chive and onion cream cheese spread but when I did the macros, I just found it to be a little too high, especially since I couldn't find turkey sausage. So I'm just basically going to half, well, let's see. I could totally measure this out and weigh this out, but I honestly don't feel like it. So I'm just gonna like eyeball half of it, of this one. And then I wasn't sure if me and the kids were actually going to like the whole um, chive and onion. So I figured I would just do half of a regular third less fat cream cheese. So I'm gonna cut this block in half, add that. Like I said, the recipe says to do two eight ounces. So basically 16 ounces of cream cheese. I wanted to tell you guys that I highly, highly recommend this recipe. It was delicious and this is definitely something that I'm going to make again and again and again. Okay, so it's been 30 minutes, so I'm just going to try to incorporate this cream cheese. In order for it to be like super creamy like it's supposed to, you probably do have to do like the whole 16 ounces. But like I said, I just found that to be a little too much fat and you know, we've got some creaminess, but I just wanna make sure that that cream cheese is incorporated and Basically, all you do is just put it in a bowl. 
This has six servings, by the way, so I say maybe like a cup to a cup and a half is a serving. So we're gonna go ahead and enjoy this, and I will see you guys for Dump and Go meal number two tomorrow. So for Dump and Go crock pot meal number two, we are having something called crock pot Italian chicken. And all you're going to need are four chicken breasts. I only have three in here, but they're really big. So about like a pound and a half to two pounds of chicken breast, two cans of cream of chicken soup, one block of cream cheese. I always do the one third less fat, so you can do the full fat, but I actually prefer the taste of this. And then one packet of zesty Italian seasoning mix. And literally all you do is just dump all this stuff in and go. We're gonna cook it on low for four hours. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you like me dumping all of this in and putting the lid on, turn it on low, four hours, and we'll see how it looks after four hours. So it's been close to six hours. This is what it's looking like. It's definitely nice and yummy and bubbly. I'm just going to take this little thing right here. Um, someone did mention in my last one that you can take a hand mixer, and yes, you can. I do not have one, however, so this is the best thing for me. Um, the recipe also said that if the meat, no, if the sauce was a little thick, it said if the sauce was a little thick, just add some milk and it'll thin it out. So not sure how that's looking at this point. I'm just gonna go ahead and go to town in shredding up this chicken as much as I can with this little thing. And I'm also boiling some rotini right now on the stove. So by the time that's done boiling, I should be all done shredding up my chicken. So this is what it looks like. <clears throat> Just in case you are watching your calories or counting your calories, by the way, I divided all of this into six servings. So one serving is one cup of just the chicken mixture itself. You want to go ahead and do your extra portion of pasta to the side, but just in case you guys are counting calories, I wanted to put that notation out there. But yeah, this was incredibly easy. It's going to be incredibly incredibly delicious and I literally not only just made dinner for tonight but I also meal prepped every single lunch for next week. I'm just gonna add some broccoli, some steam, some broccoli and add it into this and that's going to be my lunch all week long. So yeah, this is what dinner looks like and could not be easier. I'm loving these crock pot meals so I'm so glad that you guys are too. All right, I will see you with crock pot meal number three tomorrow. Okay, so dump and go crock pot meal number three is ground beef and potatoes. It's like a potato au gratin type thing. What you're gonna need is half of a cup of chicken broth, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of parsley, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of paprika, which I have right here in this little bowl. You're gonna need one pound of ground beef that's already browned. <clears throat> this I took out of the freezer last night. There's my half a cup of broth. You need one cup of diced onions. And then this right here, <clears throat> you're going to need to peel and cut up three pounds of potatoes, which again, I did last night. And in order for them to not turn brown, um, I covered them in water and just put this in the fridge. So that's a really good, huge time-saving tip. So when you get up in the morning and you're leaving before you go to work, you can literally just dump these potatoes in and you have them already prepped. So let's go ahead and just start dumping everything in. You do do it in layers. By the way, did I mention you need three cups of cheese? Because if I didn't, you need three cups of cheese. But yes, you kind of do it in layers and I'll show you that in just a minute. Okay, so first you wanna add half of the potatoes into the crock pot. Half of the seasoning. 
half of the meat. And then half of the cheese. So one and a half cups of cheese go in this one right here. By the way, I used the I used the two percent reduced fat cheese, so it can be a little lower in fat. Um, you do what's best for you and your family. Now you just repeat the same exact thing. Take your half a cup of chicken broth and just put that in there. Put the lid on, turn it on low, make sure it's plugged in because mine is not. Turn it on low, let it cook for four hours. The recipe does state do not take this lid off for any reason whatsoever because they claim that if you do the potatoes will not get soft so let this sit do not touch it for four hours so i will see you guys in four hours and show you what it looks like so this took way longer than four hours it actually took about six to seven maybe eight hours i can't really remember what time i put it on this is just weird i don't know do you guys see how like <clears throat> how much water or I guess I should say juice is in there. I'm sorry I didn't give you like the view of what it looked like with the cheese on top. But honestly, I'm just like, where did the cheese go? Like, I literally feel like it just disappeared. This is what the top looked like. Do you see the cheese on there? But the rest that I put throughout, where did it go? I don't know. I'm just feeling kind of eh about this one. <laughs> I kind of feel like at this point it's a fail. I don't know. There's just too much liquid in there, and I'm like, where's all the cheese? We'll see. I'll let you guys know. I'll plate it up, and I'll let you guys know how it tastes. Sorry about the fogginess. Okay, so I let it cool off, and as you can see, there's like still tons of juice. I would not recommend this meal whatsoever. Not at all. It's just, no. This is my plate, it's not pretty at all. Again, I let it cool down, it's still just really juicy. I thought maybe if I let it cool down, the juice would thicken up and you would see more cheese and you would, I just see potatoes, like literally just see potatoes. This meal was just too much prep for what it tastes like and what it is and I just thought it was gonna be com something completely different. So unfortunately, I wouldn't recommend this, but I still do have some really yummy ones coming up. So I will see you guys for tomorrow's dump and go crock pot meal. That will be a success, not like this one. For our next dump and go crock pot meal, this is one of my favorites. It is delicious and it's taco soup. There's many different ways to make this. Um, I've gone by a recipe and then I've also kind of added my own. So you're gonna need a can of beef broth, a can of black beans, a packet of taco seasoning, can of kidney beans, a can of diced tomatoes, a can of corn, a can of rotel, one pound of ground beef browned up, a packet of ranch or three tablespoons out of this container, and then also a block of cream cheese. Delish. So you want to keep the liquid out of all of these cans except for the beans. So go ahead, drain those, and you're literally going to dump everything else in the crock pot and let's get to it. So now all you want to do, pop the lid on, turn it on low 
for the recipe said four hours but soup I personally think you can let go as long as you want the better it cook the longer it cooks the better it tastes so it is currently like 12 so I'm probably gonna let this cook for about six hours so I will show you what it looks like when it's done this is delicious y'all need to try this if you have not. It's like I said, one of my favorite soups for sure. So this has been cooking, um, it's now 8.08. I've had a very, very, very busy day, so we are just now getting to eating dinner. But yeah, like I said, it doesn't have to cook for the just the four hours. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and combine this cream cheese in with the soup. And we're gonna get to eating. Like I said, this is one of my favorites and I highly recommend this. This is super delicious. Oh, I just got a whiff of it and my mouth is watering. This is super delicious over some tortilla chips or with some tortilla chips crushed on top. Um, you can add some rice in here if you want to. You could have some, you know, dip some taco shells in there, top it with cheese, top it with sour cream. There's so many things you can do with this. So I'm gonna keep incorporating this. I wish I would have incorporated this earlier because it's taking a minute to kind of melt on in. But yeah, I'm gonna keep on incorporating this cream cheese into the taco soup and I'll show you what it looks like all pulled up. I mean, it literally is gonna look just like this. But anyways, you guys like to see that. So I'm gonna show it to you. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Just topped it with some cheese and some sour cream. And I had the kids like all pretty with like just a little dab of, of um, cheese. But I was like, no, my, to make it look pretty for like you guys to see. And then I was like, no, they like to go, oh, not overboard, but they like cheese a lot. So I mean, who doesn't? I love cheese. So anyways, this is super delicious and I cannot wait to go eat this. So I will see you guys with the next crock pot meal. Okay, so for this dump and go crock pot meal, it's actually the morning of work and I'm so confident that I can get this done even in a time crunch because it's literally three ingredients. I've got some chicken thighs in my crock pot. What I usually do is I will make my crock pot meals at night because I just don't have time in the morning, but this is literally three ingredients. So, I mean, it takes seconds. So a jar of grape jelly, and then a jar of chili sauce. Now, if you guys saw my other, by the way, you're just gonna dump it in, but if you guys saw my other crock pot meal video, you guys saw that I did this with meatballs, and then a lovely subscriber, thank you to Nicole, she told me, hey girl, like, why don't you try that with chicken, or she mentioned something else, but I was like, Oh my gosh, that sounds delicious. So yeah, we're gonna try a little grape jelly meatball <laughs> recipe and make it into grape jelly chicken thighs. So I'm so excited to try this. Thank you again so much for your recommendation. By the way, if you guys ever have recommendations, please leave them in the comments down below and I will try them out because I find most of them on, I find most of my recipes on Pinterest or just from talking to people and just from like having a crock pot for so long, just, you know, having some go-to recipes. But I also love to add a, you know, kind of switch it up a little bit. So that's it, literally. Took me seconds. I mean, it probably took me like two minutes, but seriously, put it on low, let it cook for eight hours. And when I get home from dinner, or when I get home from work, I'm going to have me a delicious, yummy dinner. So I will show you what this looks like at the end of the day. So I will show you what this looks like when I get home from work and also what I'm going to have as sides. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Um, obviously, I've already taken um, some chicken out, but OMG, Nicole, thank you so much for this recipe. You guys need to try this. It is so good, and this is definitely gonna be a new favorite as well. This is my plate, plated up. There's the chicken. I just have some mashed potatoes, which is just like super easy, like microwave mashed potatoes. And this is actually like leftovers from my lunch. I've got some Brussels sprouts and some asparagus. So that's my dinner. And then my son's dinner is right there. They are eating ramen noodles with theirs and then my daughter's plate. So that is what 
this cr this dump and go crock pot meal looks like and we're gonna go enjoy this because it is super delicious and I'm super excited for this dinner. So I have one more dump and go crock pot meal to show you guys. So I will see you again. Okay, so for our last dump and go crock pot meal, this is so delicious and I'm actually gonna make this into tacos. Me and the kids love this so much and it's basically like queso chicken. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So you're just gonna need some chicken breast, a packet of taco seasoning, can of Rotel, can of green chilies, and you're gonna need one cup of chicken broth. Since I'm actually gonna be gone all day and I can't keep an eye on my crock pot, I am going to add the whole can because when I get home, you kind of have to like drain the excess, excess liquid anyways. So I figure better safe than sorry. This crock pot does cook pretty hot on, pre, on like a high. This, do, this crock pot does cook pretty high, so I just don't want my chicken to dry out. But if you can keep an eye on it and you're home throughout the day or you make this on a weekend, go ahead and just use one cup of the broth. So let's go ahead and dump all of this in the crock pot. to put in a whole can of chicken broth, but we'll see, we'll see. How many cups is in here? Oh, it just says one can, 411 grams. But yeah, um, we are also going to be adding this. We're also gonna be adding this, but I will show you guys. You add this 30 minutes before you're ready to serve, and then I'll also show you guys what the tacos look like because they are amazing. We're gonna bake them, and they're gonna be delicious. So. Yeah, we just cook this on low um, for eight hours and I will show you guys what it looks like before we put in the salsa con queso because I wanna show you how much liquid I have and then show you um, draining it and all that stuff. Okay, so I just got home from work and this is what it looks like, y'all. It smells delicious in here. So what you wanna do is go ahead and um, shred up your chicken. So I'm just gonna take, like I said, some of this liquid and just kind of start taking it out. So that looks about good. There's not too much liquid left in there. Now you're gonna take this. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. Now the recipe calls for like three-fourths of the container, but y'all, mmm, I love it so much that so I go ahead and put all of it in there. And yeah, it might make it a little more like liquidy again, but it's delicious. And I'm going to make this into taco shells, or I'm going to put this into taco shells, bake them, and they are absolutely delicious. So at this point, you wanna go ahead and turn it up on high and set a timer for 30 minutes, and in 30 minutes, this will be done. You could also serve this over rice. That would be delicious as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for 30 minutes and then I'll show you what the tacos look like. Okay, so this is what it should look like. Doesn't it look delicious? If you guys want it less soupy, like I said, you can totally take more of that liquid out. But I personally like it like this because I'm gonna serve it over rice tomorrow and that's just like the perfect consistency for me. Um, but today I just put it in some taco shells and I put some cheese over the top. We've got my oven on 350, so I'm gonna pop these in the oven at 350 <laughs> for about maybe 10 minutes and I will show you what they look like I'll plate it up and put some lettuce and some sour cream and deliciousness on there so I'll see you in a bit okay so this is what they look like I'm so excited these are delicious you guys you have to try this recipe if you have not yet and like I said put them in taco shells put it over rice it is delicious either way heck Eat it as a keto recipe by itself with no carbs. It's delicious. Um, 
That one is mine because the kids don't like sour cream. That one is one of the kids and that's the other one. So yeah, by the way, I put, the, I put them in the oven for only five minutes. The first meal is called a pasta fagioli. I think that's how you pronounce it, soup. It's actually called pasta e fagioli, fagioli soup. I'm Italian, but you wouldn't know it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what you need in this and then literally we're just gonna dump everything in and we're gonna go. And also, wanted to tell you, so it calls for a pound of ground beef and you do because the texture is like so off. Now you can dump and go when it comes to ground beef. It's not the best texture though. Think of a can of chili and how that meat texture is. That's exactly how the texture of your meat is going to come out in the crock pot if you do not pre-brown your ground beef. Now that's just for ground beef and probably ground turkey. I will not brown anything else. Um, and the reason why I'm including this in a dump and go is because I'm actually working on it right now, but I'm going to have one pound servings. I have like 11 pounds of ground beef over here that I'm going to fry up today or brown up today. And I'm going to individually put each of the pound of meat into a freezer bag and I'm gonna put it into my freezer. So that way, anytime I need that meat, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out. So if I need it for spaghetti, it's already made. I literally just dump it into a pan of sauce and we've got spaghetti. Make some noodles and we've got spaghetti. In meals like this, like if I make a chili in the crock pot, I already have my browned, ground beef so I don't have to worry about before I go to work or the night before going to work having to brown up the ground beef. So that is a huge time saving tip. So we're going to go ahead and get on to the first dump and go crock pot meal which like I said is pasta e fagioli soup. So these are the ingredients you're going to need. Obviously you're going to need a crock pot. If you have crock pot liners this would be great for that. Um, I don't really use them, but I know a lot of people love to use them, so if you use them, go ahead and get them out. One pound of browned up ground beef. I use the lean. You need some celery, onion, and carrot. Um, you're gonna need some thyme, basil, and oregano, but I don't have all three of those, so I'm just gonna use some Italian seasoning. You're gonna need two bay leaves. You're gonna need a can of cannellini beans, a can of kidney beans, a can, a 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, two cans of beef broth and some ditalini. And then 30 minutes before it's due to be served, you have to put in the pasta so the pasta will cook. I'm gonna go ahead and drain and rinse all of these and then all of this stuff is just going to get dumped into my crock pot. seven to eight hours and in eight hours I'm gonna come back and we're gonna put the pasta in. Okay so we are ready about ready to eat so I'm gonna go ahead and take the top off. I've already stirred it by the way. Doesn't it look delicious? You guys look at this. OMG. Okay so I'm gonna go ahead and take one cup of this pasta, pour it in there, let it cook for 30 minutes and then it'll be ready to plate up, or should I say bowl up? The recipe calls for one cup, which is basically half of this box, but I had already um, calculated in my fitness pal that I was gonna use this whole box, and when I put the one cup in there, slash half the box, but when I put half the box in there, it just, I don't know, it just looked like it wasn't enough pasta to me. So I went ahead and I, I personally added the whole box. But like I said, the recipe calls for one cup. Don't listen to what I said. <clears throat> I made a huge boo-boo. I mean huge. <laughs> I'm literally like, I was like sitting here like laughing at myself, like screaming like, no! You guys wanna see what I did? No, you can't have one. <laughs> you guys, I don't have 
have soup anymore. I just have pasta. <laughs> There's the chicken All right, so this is what it looks like. I just added some Parmesan cheese. Super yummy. That's Ava's bowl. Control's not hungry yet, so he's not gonna eat. So yeah, this would be super delicious with some crusty bread on the side or um, a nice salad, but I'm just being lazy tonight and just eating this. See you guys tomorrow for Dump and Go crock pot meal number two. Okay, so for tonight's Dump and Go crock pot meal, we are making French dip sandwiches. And what you're going to need right now to go into the crock pot is about a three pound beef chuck roast, third of a cup of reduced sodium soy sauce, one cup of Coke, two 10 and a half, 10 and a half ounce cans of beef consomme, fourth of a cup of dry minced onions, one tablespoon of beef bouillon, one teaspoon garlic powder, half a teaspoon onion powder, half a teaspoon dried oregano, half a teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon pepper, quarter teaspoon dried thyme, and one bay leaf. Now I do not have thyme. I do not have onion powder, which I thought I did, but I don't. So I'm gonna omit that. Um, and I don't have oregano. So for the oregano and thyme, I'm actually going to use Italian seasoning. So let's go ahead and get this all in the crock pot. By the way, if you want to go ahead and sear your chuck roast, you can. Um, I'm choosing not to because I feel like it's just a waste of time. I don't feel like it adds more flavor or anything. So let's go ahead and assemble this in the crock pot. up the meat and cook it for another one to two hours okay so this is what it looks like when it's done I went ahead and just kind of um, shredded up the meat a little bit and then what I did was I took some I guess hoagie rolls from the deli and I just put the meat on each of the roll and I topped it with provolone cheese and we ended up putting it in the oven at 450 degrees for like 5-10 minutes just for the bread to crisp up and the cheese to get melty. And also added the little juice on the side. These were delicious. I will say you're going to need the au jus sauce though for sure because without it, it's very dry. All right, so this came together super quickly. I just have some of the au jus sauce on the side. I'm the only one that wanted it. The kids did not. So there's Contrell's plate, there's Ava's. Um, Ava wanted corn, so that's what we're having on the side. And this is what the, this deliciousness looks like. Like, right? Oh, we cannot wait to go eat this. Okay, so crock pot meal number three, you guys. This could not be easier. And I'm telling you, this is the way that you want to make sauce if you want some really, really, really good tasting sauce. So again, this could not be easier. But I have already browned up some ground beef. I have like 11 pounds in the freezer. So this is still frozen. This is, like I said, already cooked. So a pound a piece. So here I'm going to just throw in this frozen ground beef into the crock pot. one pound number two so i just have two let's see 24 ounce jars of tomato sauce from walmart and what i like to do is always fill the jar about this much with some water and from there like shake 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 so this much full of water shake it and then pour it so you get every single bit of sauce I'll let mine cook for 10 hours 
and I've seen and I've realized that you can actually cook pasta in your crock pot as well. What you would need to do if you wanted to just throw the pasta in here is 30 minutes before you're wanting to, to eat your dinner, throw in some pasta, put the lid on it, and it's gonna cook it. I personally want this to freeze. So like we're gonna eat like half of this maybe or like a quarter of this or whatever and freeze the rest. So I'm not gonna add pasta and I'm actually going to cook mine separately on the stove. But if you want this to be a legit dump and go, boom, bam, done, 30 minutes before, throw in some pasta and you've got a complete meal ready for you. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna let that go to town, pop the lid on it, and I'll catch you guys back here in 10 hours. Okay, so this is the sauce. Oh, hello. And I just boiled some rotini, added some sauce to it, topped it with Parmesan cheese, and that is dinner for tonight. Um, this would be great with some garlic bread on the side and a salad, but I'm not feeling that great, so thank you, crock pot. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys this real quick. I went ahead and I put the rest of the sauce that I did not use in a freezer bag, and I'm just going to pop this in the freezer for any time I want a slow-cooked sauce super, super, super quickly. So that was a super easy meal, you guys. Like, I'm talking like literally dump and go, like two ingredients. Yes, give it to me. All right, so this dump and go crock pot meal is called slow cooker root beer chicken. And this is something new to me. I've never tried it before. And what you're going to need are two pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. You're gonna need one and a half cups of barbecue sauce, which is basically this size container, which is an 18 ounce container. So an 18 ounce container of um, barbecue sauce. You're gonna need some dried oregano, garlic powder, onion powder, and cayenne pepper. I don't like cayenne pepper um, because the kids don't like spicy, so I'm leaving that out. And I don't have oregano, and I also don't have onion powder. So I'm just gonna use Italian seasoning and then some garlic powder. And then you want a 12 ounce can of root beer. I got these little tiny baby seven and a half ounces, so I just went ahead and weighed my out in a cup. So now you just put everything in the crock pot, turn it on low for, what is it, seven hours? And yeah, let's go ahead and get this stuff in there. I shut my eyes, trying not to speak, pretend that I'm dreaming. I smell your breath, not listening, but I still hear you screaming. Alright, so once you get all of the ingredients in, this is what your chicken should look like. It did not call for any salt and pepper, so um, I'll let you know if I feel like it needs it. But now, just go ahead and put the top on, turn it on low, and let me tell you, I've been loving these drop and these dump and go crock pot meals. Like, what? Dinner is gonna be ready in seven hours. Bam. Okay, so it's been seven hours. Actually, I think it's been a little longer than seven hours because it's almost six o'clock. And so I'm just taking like two forks and I'm just shredding this chicken. The one thing that I'm noticing, okay, first of all, it smells delicious. But the one thing I am noticing about this is that it's very watery, like very watery. And I was kind of hoping, you know, for like a thick sauce. I'm thinking of barbecue, so I'm thinking, you know, I want something thick. And this is just not thick. I'm just gonna take these rolls, plate it up with some fruits, and we are going to have dinner. So I'll show you my plate when it's all plated up. Okay, so here's my plate plated up. There's Ava's, there's Contrell's. To be honest with you guys, I personally feel like I would have rather have just dumped some chicken in there, dumped just some, what's it called? Barbecue sauce and call it a day. I don't think that the root beer really added any flavor. Um, 
I don't know. Like I said, I definitely think that it would have been much better served over rice. This chicken over like on a bun just isn't the best. I just had the taste for barbecue today and I wanted something really barbecue-y and this is not where it's at. So if you want something barbecue-y, do it over rice and not on a bun. I think I might have, if I have some in the fridge, I'm gonna add a little bit on top. But yeah, that is our dinner for tonight. Okay, so this crock pot meal is like the easiest crock pot meal ever. I don't even know if it has a name. I personally call it um, grape jelly meatballs. This is like one of the kids' favorites. Um, and so it's usually more like an appetizer, but the kids are obsessed and we love to make this as a dinner. So all you're gonna need is a 12 ounce container of chili sauce. You will find this um, over there by the ketchup and stuff like that. You are going to need a bag. I just have here a 32 ounce bag of turkey meatballs. Um, personally, it does taste better with the full fat, like regular pork um, or ground beef meatball, but these are definitely obviously like healthier for you and all that stuff, so have those. And then I have here a 18 ounce jar of grape jelly. I've also heard people do barbecue sauce. Um, so I think instead of the barbecue sauce, or instead of the chili sauce, people have done barbecue sauce, but these are the three ingredients that I like to make. So again, literally just dump and go. Like, uh, this is so easy. You don't even have to cook this that long. It's like one o'clock now. So you can take like half the afternoon um, it's just so incredibly easier. I will say if you're going to cook with these turkey meatballs that you should not cook, cook them as much because they're going to dry out a little bit or a little bit more if you do cook it like regular eight hours. But yeah, you just literally dump them in there and then you put in your, you can at the same time, your chili sauce and your Actually, I have to get something for this. And the clouds are closing in. You see, I know this, but the last days in real life I've noticed. Losing focus, breaking up from our life as we know it. If someone had told Alright, so this is what it's going to look like. Now I'm just going to put it on low. Put the cover on. And I'll see you guys back in four hours. So, four hours on low. Alright, so this is what they look like after about four hours of cooking on low. Um, and I'm actually just going to serve it just like this tonight. Um, probably some veggies on the side. But, um, yeah, this is another super, super simple, easy crock pot meal that is done super quickly and takes like no prep at all. Literally, you just dump and go. So, yeah, this one is meal number what? Number six. Okay, so for this part of the recipe, you're going to need some chicken, some garlic, some salt, pepper, basil, 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, and a quarter cup of water. So let's go ahead and dump all of this into the crock pot. start today so I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid on and I'm going to cook it on high for four hours so it's 12 it'll be done in at four o'clock if you have the time cook it on low for eight hours when this is done we will just shred the chicken up and then we'll add the pasta and then we will cover it with other things so that's it for right now I'm gonna let it do its thing 
and I'll see you guys back here in four hours. Okay, so it's been, actually it's been four and a half hours. And this is what our delicious food looks like. So I'm gonna take this little thing right here. I will link one down below, but you can get them at Walmart. Um, I actually find this, found this at Kroger, one of my local grocery stores. So what you just wanna do is go ahead and start shredding the chicken. And these little contraptions are a really great way to go ahead and shred that chicken in a super fast way. So this is what we're working with. Now you want to take 12 ounces of whatever pasta you have. I'm thinking this is about 12 ounces. I'm not uh, entirely sure because there's some gone and it was a 16 ounce package. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lay my angel hair in and I'm gonna kind of push it down into the sauce and this is going to take 30 minutes. So that is what it'll look like. Now you just want to pour on top two cups of mozzarella cheese. And then you want to put the cover on that for 10 more minutes while the cheese melts. Now this is something completely and entirely optional, but this is something that you do on the stove top if you want to do it, and I am going to do it. Okay, so you just want to take two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and then half a cup go ahead and heat that over medium because you want this to be nice and warm yes i'm getting new pans i'm working on it i know this is old dingy and gross don't have to tell me twice you're going to take half a cup of breadcrumbs and we're just going to basically like toast them on the stove in the olive oil to put on top of the casserole to kind of emulate and make it like it's an actual casserole that's coming out of the oven. So like I said, this is a total optional step, but I think that it's a really delicious step that you shouldn't want to miss. Our breadcrumbs are nice and toasty. A little almost burnt. <laughs> Our cheese is nice and melted. So you just want to see if I can get this in frame. Oh yeah, we got a little we got a little burn on there. We got a little burn on there. Maybe it won't be too bad. Um, and then you want to put some Parmesan cheese on top. And there is your delicious dump and go chicken parmesan casserole. Okay, so for our last dump and go crock pot meal, this is probably one of mine and the kids' favorites. And again, it is so incredibly simple, but yet so incredibly flavorful. So this is called the Mississippi pot roast. And all you're gonna need is a chuck roast. Um, you can do like about, I usually go about three pounds. This is two and two and about a quarter pounds. Um, you're gonna need one full stick of butter. You're gonna need some pepperoncinis. You're gonna need one packet of onion soup mix and one packet of ranch seasoning. And literally just dump everything in and go. Now I've seen, a, I've seen this recipe on YouTube a lot. Some people use brown gravy mix. Some people use other things. Some people only put in like four or five pepperoncinis, y'all. I load it down with pepperoncinis because I don't think it adds much spice. And I'll tell you because my kids do not like spice and girl, they will pick it up in a heartbeat. But they don't pick this up and it just adds so much flavor. So let's go ahead and get started with this super delicious yet super, super simple crock pot meal. Okay, 
so as you can see here, I loaded, I completely surrounded the roast with the pepperoncinis. I have like 13 or 14 of them in there. Again, all of the ones I've seen on YouTube do like four or five. I don't know where I got this recipe from. I think I just pulled it off of Pinterest like, I don't know, like last year and me and the kids are just obsessed with it. So yeah, I've kind of adapted it to my family's liking and this is the way that I personally do it and I think this is the most best delicious flavor. So we're just going to pop the lid on it and put this on low and cook it for eight hours. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Delicious, you guys. This little sauce gravy deliciousness going on is so good. Usually I do like a bigger meal with this, like some rice, some veggies, maybe a potato, something like that. But today we're literally just going to have this on some rolls, which I've never done before, and but I know it's gonna be amazing. Um, and I'm just super, super, super busy, and I've got a lot of stuff to get done. So we're just gonna have some broccoli on the side, and that is what this deliciousness looks like. I wish you guys could smell this. It is so good. If you have not tried this, you need to. This is by far my most favorite thing to do in the crock pot. No joke, like it is delicious. So everyone needs to try this. So that's that one. And we're gonna do one more. I thought this was gonna be the last one, but we're gonna do one more crock pot meal because it is so super simple and easy. I'm actually gonna get started tonight. Okay, so this is our last dump and go crock pot meal. I'm actually making this at night to put in the fridge. So in the morning, I can let it come to room temperature and then put it in the little crock pot base and turn it on low. So when I come home from work, I will have a super delicious meal waiting to come home. So all you wanna do, we're gonna make chili by the way. Um, you wanna go ahead and add in two pounds of ground beef. Mine is frozen. So what I've done is I've taken like 11 pounds of ground beef and I've ground it, put them each in individual one pound bags and I froze it. So that way I can literally have dump and go crock pot meals as I need them. So I highly recommend that you guys do this too. As you can see, it is frozen, but that's that. So you just dump in your ground beef. I'm doubling this. So keep in mind, this is for a doubled chili. So we're gonna add two 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce two 14 and a half ounce cans of diced tomatoes, the recipe calls for 16 ounces of salsa. Here I have only 24 ounces because you know 12 or 16 and 16 is 32. So I'm just going to add in a can of Rotel with diced tomatoes and green chilies. Two cans of rinsed and drained black beans. Two cans of rinsed and drained kidney beans. Four tablespoons or a quarter of a cup of chili powder. Two teaspoons of ground cumin. And then four teaspoons of sugar. So, bam. There is your chili, literally. Could not be easier, you guys. Could not be easier. So I'm just gonna go ahead and carefully, because as you can see, this doubling brought it all the way to the top, plus the fact that my ground beef is still frozen, brought this all the way to the top. So I'm just gonna kind of stir this a little bit. I'm gonna pop the lid on it. Tonight, I'm going to pop this in the fridge. I'm gonna pop the lid on it and I'm going to put this in the fridge so tomorrow morning when I wake up before I go to work, I can go ahead and put it in here, turn it on low for eight hours and I can have me a delicious chili waiting on me when I get home. By the way, the reason that I doubled the chili is because um, chili freezes beautifully. So whatever it is that I don't finish throughout the week, I will go ahead and put it into a plastic baggie and freeze it 
So whenever I want chili, it's already made for me and I can just dump it back into the crock pot and make another meal. So yeah, I will show you guys what it looks like tomorrow evening when I get home from work. No point in me showing you. Literally in the morning, I'm gonna take it out, put it on the counter, let the container come to room temperature, put it in the base, turn the base on low, let it cook all day while I'm at work, and when I come home, I will show you guys what it looks like, and I'll show you what I plated up with. So my first day of work ended up being so crazy that the last thing on my mind was filming um, what the chili looked like and everything. Thank God for this meal coming home, like being able to come home to this meal because there was no way I was cooking after the day I had. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you like the chili was literally like, just looked like chili. It was nothing, nothing exciting, pretty basic. I just topped mine with some shredded, shredded cheddar cheese and some sour cream. And one night I actually did it with some Fritos that I had on hand. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys wanna see more, I will be more than happy to do a marathon style video like this. I have probably about 20 crock pot videos. They're all dump and go. So if you wanna see more, let me know and I will definitely do more marathon videos. I love you guys. If you are new here, please subscribe, click the notification bell so you're always notified of every single upload. Share this video, like this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.